Friends, welcome to Nanava's Kitchen. You are visiting for the first time, a very warm welcome to you as well. Thanks for stopping by. You'll be glad you did. On the menu today is our party jollof rice recipe. It's going to be amazing. Let's get started. Yes, my friends, jollof rice is popular in Africa, just as popular as paella is to the Latin people and biryani to the Indian people. It is prepared with rice in a very well-developed tomato-based stew. So you have to get that tomato-based stew on point. And I have the best recipe I'm going to be sharing with you very soon in this video. So what we do is we begin by preparing my veggies which will be incorporated in the jollof once it's about 80% cooked. So I start with my oil and it's coconut oil which has been heated and I add my serrano chilies and I leave them whole on purpose because I just want the flavor infused into my dish and not the heat. And then I add my green beans, carrots and onions and I also added dry parsley, salt, crushed black pepper, and smoked paprika. A great party jollof rice recipe has to be smoky. The grains need to be fluffy and not sticking to each other and just delicious. And so that's what we're going for. Now we are preparing our tomato base to our jollof stew. I start with my shallot onions. I cook them for about three minutes till well caramelized and then I add my tomato paste and cook that also for another three minutes till the canned flavor is eliminated. These are my spices and they are aniseed, black peppercorns, grains of saline and calabash nutmeg which I added to some onions, ginger and garlic and I blend and add it to the pot and I cook that for about 10 minutes and then I add my bay leaves. I have a very well detailed preparation on my jollof stew. So check that out, it's linked below. Now I'm adding my dry aromatics. I've added some more smoked paprika to jumpstart that smoky flavor. And then I've added some rosemary, dry rosemary, oregano, thyme, and parsley. Now here is my homemade tomato sauce which I have cooked down for hours so the flavors are very well developed and concentrated and ready to go. So I add some of that to my pot and cook an additional 10 minutes and our stew is ready. This tomato sauce is delicious on its own because it has onions, ginger, garlic, fresno and serrano chilies, red and green bell peppers all cooked down for hours. It is just perfect. So our tomato stew is ready. I have scooped three fourths of a cup of our jollof stew and I've added it to my medley of fresh vegetables. And now I have turned the heat off at this point and I'm just stirring it so the ingredients get well incorporated. And then I'll set this aside and begin the actual cooking of the party jollof rice. So this will serve as sort of a marinade for these vegetables. By the time that we add it to our cooked jollof rice, it is already delicious on its own and it's not tasting bland. That's what I'm going for. So here is some of the oil from the jollof stew which I'm going to use to begin the preparation. I have some of the chicken that I reserved from cooking my oven grilled chicken. I cut the chicken quarters into little pieces and add it to the pot and I've just added some more smoked paprika. I keep repeating the smoked paprika because it is essential in this preparation. You want that party jollof rice to have that smoky taste. So there we go. I cover it up for five minutes until the chicken is cooked through and then I add three cups, three heaping cups full of my tomato stew or my jollof stew and I continue to cook. At this point, we need to deglaze this pot. So the tomato stew is going to do that. So I give it a good stir and then I cover it back up so that steam will develop to help deglaze this pot so we can add our rice. We have been cooking for about 15 minutes at this point. The chicken is cooked through and ready to go. 
So here is that steam I'm talking about and here we're now deglazing this pot. A very important step because we want all this delicious uh, caramelized bits on the bottom of the pot to join the entire stew, right? We don't want to leave this on the bottom because this is deliciousness right there. So see, the pot is deglazed and we are ready to go. So we're going to add our rice and I'm using basmati rice and it's five cups of it. I have washed it thoroughly until that water turned clear. And so that has gone in. And now what do I always do when I cook my jollof rice? I toast my rice because it is an important step. What happens when you toast your rice is it helps the rice to be fluffy in the end. So the grains are not sticking to each other. And that is the goal you want. So we toast it for about five minutes until all of the moisture has seeped into each grain of rice, has been absorbed into each grain of rice. And then we're ready to add our water and keep on going. Now I am not using broth in cooking this rice because I've already incorporated the chicken. The chicken is still in the rice, so we don't need chicken broth or any broth in this preparation. So here goes our water, and I ended up using four cups of water to prepare this rice. So I add my water, and I give it a good stir, and I trap the steam with my foil and the lid, and I cook for an exactly 20 minutes. I don't disturb it at all. And when I go back in and turn the rice, we have our fluffy rice. We still have some areas that are crunchy, so not cooked all the way through, but we are about 90% in the cooking process. So at this point, it is safe to add our crunchy, delicious vegetables from the beginning. So that gets added at this point. And then we stir it up, gently making sure that we are not breaking those rice grains. They are fluffy, they are elongated and thin and slender and just gorgeous. Look at that. Perfect. So give it a good stir. Still our serrano chilies are left whole. So we are going to get the flavor, that beautiful fresh chili flavor without the heat. And that's what I'm going for. So now cover it for only five more minutes. And voila. Look at that. Just absolutely hands down beauty right there. See how the grains are separated and fluffy? We wanted a smokiness. Look, we got that smokiness without intentionally burning the bottom of our rice dish. That's typically how it is prepared when you're making that uh, party jollof rice. Toward the end, you set the heat high to burn the bottom to get that smokiness. I saved my pot that trouble. <laughs> I really don't want to ruin my pot. So I just add my smoked paprika to get the same outcome. Smokiness, fluffiness. It is perfect and gorgeous. And I served it with my coleslaw and that recipe is coming out soon. And here is my oven, roasted oven grilled chicken, which was delicious. My guests we're happy. My family, we're thankful. Try this recipe and you will not be disappointed. I thank you so much for watching. To my subscribers, I appreciate you deeply. Thank you. Make it a great day and as always, have fun, especially in that kitchen.